Hello, Eric Gibo, ericgibo.com, and today, thanks to Photosura.com, I'm going to present you the Canon M6 Mark II. Let's start. First of all, when you watch the video, maybe a few days later, you will watch the, the test, the my review of the uh, Nikon Z50, and you will think uh, they are the same pictures. Well, I tested both at the same time, so this is why uh, the pictures are the same, because uh, I went to the same places, I made a picture with both, but each picture uh, comes from each camera, so there's no confusion, but this way, when you watch both videos, you can actually compare. So, before going any further, if you want, I'll leave you uh, my review of the 90D, uh, Canon 90D. Why? Uh, because many people think uh, this is the, the, the mirrorless equivalent to that reflex and I all, all also thought that and it's partly right but I think mainly it's Canon who wants us to think about this and I think many Canonists are, are going to think, uh, are going to hate me again, they're going to think I'm against Canon again, I'm not against Canon because uh, I really congratulated uh, uh, Canon for the 90D but I think this time uh, Canon is back to what they were doing, laughing at the client, and I think they fell short of what they could do, and I'm going to tell you why. I can imagine a meeting uh, with uh, the director of cell, cell director at Canon, and the marketing director, and some engineers, and they say, well, great news, the 90D is a full success. Even Eric said it was a great camera. Oh, we, we must find some ways of uh, shitting on this, and uh, this way, maybe Eric will speak bad about us again. So I've, um, we have to find something. And one of the engineers that was there said, I've got an idea. We're going to get a Ferrari engine, put it in a Renault Twingo, and put some wooden wheels. I think this way Eric will find out and he will tell about it in, in, in his YouTube channel. And this, this is what they've made, I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to show you uh, some pictures I've made and also some uh, videos. I didn't make that many, but enough to have an idea of how it works, how I feel with the camera and my, my opinion. Uh, I think you should uh, check my uh, review of the Canon 90D because uh, there are some common things. And uh, the first thing is, this is a mirrorless camera, so it's different from 90D. This is APS-C format, same thing and it uses the same sensor, 32.5 uh, uh, megapixel. So, uh, here starts the problem. First, uh, to put 32.5 uh, megapixel in an APS-C sensor, you need some mm, square balls, honestly, uh, because this is really limit. And actually, uh, I don't know how Canon managed to do it, but uh, uh, in the 90D, they more or less contain the, the noise uh, at 3200 ISO, it's usable. 30, 30, 6400 uh, ISO, it's savable, and then it, it's a problem. So you probably think, yeah, but uh, why do you speak well about the 90D and not so well about this camera? First, this is not a bad camera. This is not a bad camera. But I think Canon sh could have done a lot better and more, they, they, they could have uh, actually kept their promises because the way they, they, they speak about it, you feel this is a 90D in a mirrorless version. And not in many points, no, and others, yes, but many points, no. So why do I speak good about the 90D and not so good about this one? Well, the 90D, you have access to the uh, range of lenses, the EF and EFS mounts, and you can actually, uh, there are many types of lenses from very good down to quite bad, but you can put some really good lenses and get good things out of this uh, massive uh, megapixel sensor. But when we go to the M camera, the M lineup uh, of lenses is really lousy for that resolution, not for any resolution, for that resolution. So uh, except the 32 millimeter 1.4, the M lenses are not prepared for such a resolution. So you will not get the result you could expect or you would get from the 90D uh, quality wise. So what's the solution? To use an adapter and put EF or EFS lenses. So what's the point? You want a reduced size camera, a mirrorless camera, and then you end up using a reflex lenses with an adapter. So this is a nonsense. So really, this is why I'm really disappointed. 
Second, uh, I never understood if the M uh, line of cameras by Canon was, uh, has not been completely born yet or was already dying. So when they said they were getting out the M6 Mark II as a replacement of the M6 and M5, I thought, well, kind of replacement, it's like kind of mix of both, you know. I thought, well, now Canon has decided to to really bet on the M line, and I thought maybe they're going to do like Sony uh, with uh, the APS-C in the A6000 range. Like, 6,000, uh, 6,100, 6,400, 6,600, and so on. And the full frame uh, sticks on the A7 and different version, A9. I thought maybe Canon is going to do the same thing. APS-C will go on the M line and the full frame will go on the R line. I thought that was maybe the idea, you know? But then I see this and they don't issue new lenses and they put a sensor that is far too that has far too many megapixels for the lens lineup. So I think, what are they doing? What are they do doing? So it's really a big disappointment uh, for me because they didn't they they're not really actually betting on the M line because they they would issue some really good lenses for that, and this is not logical. So we're going to speak about the camera. Here it is, and uh, it comes like this. As you can see, it's nice size, weight, 400 grams. Uh, flip screen. Well, to change, I'm going to show you some vlogging. So testing some uh, vlogging style with the, the screen up. Uh, obviously, when the screen is up, uh, you cannot uh, put a, a microphone in the Hot 2. This happened the same thing on the Sony Alpha uh, A6000 Sari. I'll leave you a link of the 6400. And um, the sound you're hearing right now is uh, the internal microphone, so you have an idea uh, how it works. And uh, that's it for vlogging testing. So you see the screen is, you can move it, fully touchable, uh, really nice screen, size three, three inch, uh, nice screen, okay. But as you can see, the screen, where's the viewfinder? No viewfinder, well. One second, a viewfinder here, up. So I put the viewfinder in there and I have a viewfinder. Obviously, if you put the viewfinder, electronic viewfinder, you cannot pull up the screen. You cannot put a flash in the hot shoe. You cannot put a microphone in the hot shoe. So I don't know why they've made that, but that's the way it is. And uh, that's the first part. Second part, when you use the viewfinder, if you steady, great, perfect. See noise, everything is fine. But if you move like this, then it goes. This is horrible. Honestly, if you're doing some sport photography and you want to do some panning, you will see it like this. It's really shaky. It's not nice. I really, uh, I, I really uh, don't like it. So for me, uh, it would be better to have uh, just an optical viewfinder and just maybe some frame like, like in a Leica. It's a, you can see through. And uh, so you don't have to avoid reflection here, but uh, honestly, this is uh, okay if you do steady shot, but if you do action photography, that's a problem. I mean, it's not good. It's really not good. This camera is not sealed against uh, weather, uh, rain and uh, humidity and dust. So this is a problem. So I uh, see this already a difference with the 90D. Okay, I'll speak a lot about the 90D because I, I tested two days ago and uh, many people say it's the same thing. And it's not the same thing. You're going to see why it's not the same thing. Weight is really nice. It feels nice in your hand. Okay. Uh, buttons are really well placed. I like the way they're placed. And uh, none of them are configurable. So you can actually do uh, your camera to your hand. You configure the way you want. That's nice. You have also some uh, preset, personal uh, preset. You want to say uh, to keep your own configuration. You can have two personalized must, plus the current one. So uh, that's okay. You can have three sets of presets. You actually configure as you want. So that's nice. Uh, the size is nice. It feels nice in your hand. Buttons are well, well placed. So uh, don't complain about this. Uh, if you want uh, some street camera, or small camera for traveling, this is a nice camera in your hand. No doubt about it. 
Burst rate, it goes from uh, 14 uh, images uh, per second up to 30 images per second. But if you do 30 images per second, then it's, uh, it's like uh, the, pro, uh, the pro capture by uh, Olympus. It starts capturing before and then you keep the best picture. But the standard uh, highest burst rate is 14 images per second. Which, so this is faster than the, than the 90D. But uh, when you go on 14 images per second, uh, the autofocus uh, doesn't cope uh, really well with uh, focusing, so with the speed. So it's more logical to use a slower burst rate uh, if you're going to do that kind of pictures because at 14 images per second, the autofocus is uh, a bit uh, lost there, okay? ISO, uh, they go from 100 up to 25,600 ISO. Uh, same sensor as an ITD, so same result for that. Uh, you get uh, actually very usable up to 3200 uh, ISO, savable on 6400, and then really paparazzi style on the 12,800 uh, and uh, 25,600. And for me, they're not usable. It depends on the kind of uh, picture you're doing, but for normal quality picture, they're not usable. So, uh, but it's already a miracle if you think in, in 3200, uh, in 32.5 megapixel to get acceptable ISO on 3200. It's a miracle, so I cannot blame them to not be able to go higher. Anyway, Canon has never been really too good at high, high SO, but uh, with this size, of, uh, with, with this uh, amount of uh, resolution, I think they're managing quite well. But for people who think it will be like a Sony camera, they're going to be disappointed. For me, 3200 usable, it's okay, and 6400 savable, that's fine. So for me, it's not a problem, but for many people, that may be a problem. There is no stabilization, no IBIS, and uh, there is an electronic stabilization. I don't like that. I think when you get to that price range or that kind of camera, they should have an IBIS or lenses with uh, uh, stabilization. I don't know why they're not doing that. This is not serious. I think it's time that every camera has uh, stabilization. I don't know why they don't do it. And uh, I don't like electronic stabilization because what you get on one hand, you lose it on the other hand. So that's not logical. Autofocus, it uses dual pixel system. It's a great, brilliant system. It works really well. It has uh, 143 autofocus point or 99 uh, points. Depends on what you want to select. You can also use only one if you want, but as many points. I use myself only one, so it's not a problem to me, but it works really fine, really well. It has phase detection and I detect. Uh, I know in the 90D I did that uh, gesture when I spoke about I detect and people thought that it, it focuses where you actually uh, point you with your eyes. No, no, no. I mean, this is your victim. <laughs> the person that is there, you can detect his face and uh, his eye. So uh, that's the way it works. And it works really well. Video and photo, it works fine. Speed, it goes from 30 seconds up to 4 thousandths of a second plus bulb. So Another difference with uh, the 90D, which goes up to 8 thousandths, 8 thousandths of a second. That's so hard to say this. I mean, 8 thousandths of a second, okay. But this is 4 thousandths. So uh, that's shorter. So that, that's shorter. That's, 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 not as, that's not as fast. So some people uh, who are expecting to do uh, action photography and need 8 thousandths, uh, they don't get it. So. Just, you know, you, well, then you decide, but then it's another thing. We cannot compare one camera with the other one. So it's false to say they're similar, okay? It has a small flash here, okay? Pop-up flash. And in synchroni it synchronizes at 200th of a second. Same if you put a flash on the hot shoe, that 200th of a second. So uh, that's also a difference with 90D that synchronizes at 250th of a second. So this is different also. If you are using a lot of flash and uh, uh, out of camera flashes, uh, probably you want the highest speed, uh, synchronization speed as possible and uh, you're not getting it here. One thing I like, when you're actually looking through the, uh, the, the viewfinder, you can actually move uh, the focusing dot with your finger. So here there's no joystick, but you can actually do it this way. So I think this is really good, really, really nice, this part. Obviously for people uh, who want to have some preset like fireworks, portrait, landscape, you have some scene modes, so it's all there. So even if you're not uh, an expert and you're a beginner and you need some help or you want to have some help this way, you get it. So that's a good point. Now let's speak about video. Well, 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 well. I don't know how to say that. 
There are things I do not understand. Most people who want mirrorless camera, they want some kind of video service or, or features. And maybe they never use it, but when they buy the camera, they think, well, I will be able to do videos. And other, they really buy that for videos. So I don't understand why the feature, the video feature in the Noi TD are better than this one. <laughs> this is not logical. Uh, I know that in Europe, we're happy with 25 images per second. But in the US, Australia, many South American countries, mm, many countries, they need 24 images per second to have a cine look. And this camera doesn't have it. So in the Noi TD, it did not have it, but then they issued a firmware, so it has it. But this one, I've got the latest firmware and you don't have 24p. I don't know why. This is not logical. This is, if it would be more logical to have it in this one and not in the 90D, but I don't know what Canon is doing with that. You do get 4K and you get 25 and 30 frames per second. And then full HD, uh, 1080, you get 25, 30, 50, 60, 100 and 120 frames per second. So you have a slow motion with a 60, 50, uh, depends what you're recording, but at least 100 and 120 and 20 frames per second. But then in these two, 100 and 120, you do not have dual pixel. So it means if you're doing some action video and uh, you have to follow your subject, then, um, or you do manual focusing, or uh, you won't have the dual pixel, so the autofocus won't be as good, and uh, you probably will have some problem uh, recording. Video recording time, maximum recording time, 30 minutes. I know I explained in the other video why. Uh, before there was a tax in Europe, uh, and Maker actually uh, made the cameras worldwide, but they're, they're limited because in Europe it was limited. Uh, you had to pay extra tax if the video, if the camera was recording uh, more than 30 minutes, because then it was considered as a video uh, camera and not a photo camera. And uh, this tax doesn't exist, so many makers have removed this time, uh, time limit, but Canon kept it, 30 minutes maximum, probably to protect the cine, uh, cinema line of uh, cameras. But I don't think anyone who buys this we would buy this instead of a cinema camera that costs 10 times more, honestly. So I don't, I, don't, I don't see the point. Okay, but there is a time limit of continuous recording of 30 minutes. Connectivity, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. So you can actually uh, connect, uh, manage your camera from your smartphone, no problem. And connectivity, you have a microphone jack, remote control jack, if you don't want to use a smartphone to uh, remote control it. You can actually use a button with a cable here. No headphone jack. So if you wanted to uh, check your uh, sound while you record, it's not possible. HDMI, mini HDMI and USB-C. So when people hear USB-C, they think, oh great, I can charge my camera while using it. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, no, no. Well, Canon started. It means, if you thought you were going to connect your uh, telephone, your smartphone charger to this, wrong. You need to buy a specific charger by Canon to connect to your USB ports to be able to charge it. That's the way it is. So I don't understand that either. So this is ridiculous. I think this is where Canon is laughing at us. They're selling things that are not logical. So, that money you get me from the charger, I would probably spend it on lenses. On something from you but if you get me angry I don't spend anything I don't even buy the camera it uses SD card uh, compatible with UHS 2 so that's good obviously the rest UHS 1 and all this but UHS 2 so that's good news battery wow battery I was really 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 excited about the battery so I thought the Noi TD gives you 1300 shots on one battery in reflex mode and 400 shots on mirrorless mode so i will get at least 400 wrong 305 305 and if you actually record video 80 minutes so uh, this is ridiculous i mean three four years ago okay that was acceptable that the battery would give you like 300 and short uh, pictures 
But nowadays, it's not acceptable. I don't know why. Don't you have space to put a batch that's a bit bigger? I mean, maybe, I don't know. Make it a bit wider? I don't know. But 300 shots on one battery charge is ridiculous. And also, I think the kit lens is uh, 15 to 45 uh, millimeter. And from 3.5 to 6.3. So this is... <laughs> Why, does it, why don't they go up to 55? Okay, because 45 in APS-C 1.6 crop uh, is like too short for portrait. It's slightly too short, go to 55. And second, uh, it's not luminous. 3.5, yeah, that's normal for uh, the kit lens. But 6.3, most of them are on 5.6. So I don't think that that's good. It should be better kit lens, okay? Uh, I think Canon, come on. If you want to sell this M line, you must wake up. You must give a better product. Uh, this camera had everything to make a competitor of the Alpha 6400, but you put too much resolution, so you cannot handle high ISO. You don't put a headphone jack. You don't put mm, many things. You've got, you, you have the knowledge. I, I don't think Canon are stupid. I think. They, they're good engineers and they could make something better. I don't know why. They seem they don't want to sell. Uh, you must create better lenses for, for the M line. Uh, and, and now they even announced that uh, they, they're not planning to do EF uh, S uh, lenses anymore. They don't want to, to create new ones. They still build what they have, but they, they, did make, they still make what they have, but they, they, they don't want to create new ones. So what's about this? What, this M line, where is it going? Are you really planning to keep this line? Because I start to worry. Am I buying this and in two years time you tell me, oh, the, the M line is over? I don't know what to think. I was expecting lenses with this. If you're going to put this sensor in there, you must create lenses. You must make this a real camera with viewfinder uh, or differently placed if you're going to use that or whatever but this camera had everything uh, to be a really great mirrorless camera and uh, it's not it is not whatever some people are really happy with them but as any product most people are really happy with what they have very often they have not tried anything else so they think they have the best until they try something else and uh, which is logical if they're happy with it they're happy with it until they see oh yeah but this is no that's right it's not too good and this could be better than this and i think if canon is still making this m line they must work on that they don't need a sensor with so much resolution resolution they, they, they could make less resolution better iso get this is your top of the line a camera in the, the m line so get a uh, headphone jack, get everything to get a great camera, to get the best camera, your best mirrorless APS-C. And uh, you know, working on that, Canon, come on, this is not serious. So I was really excited, really happy, really fine, really overwhelmed by the 90D. I was really happy, I thought, well, Canon, they came back with something good. And then I checked that, I'm, a dis I'm disappointed. I actually said in the other video, if you more a mirror mirrorless guy, Check the M6 Mark II, and now I think if you want mirrorless, get something else. Get Sony A6400, get Micro Four Third, get a Fuji XT30, get something else because this is too short for what they promise. So, is it a good camera? Yeah, it's okay camera. It's okay camera, but not what you could expect and not what they're selling you. They actually use the fact that people think because they've been mm, uh, driven this way that uh, high resolution is means a good camera. And very often you go to a shop and they tell you, oh, this, is, this one is 24 megapixels and this one is 32 megapixels, so 32 is better. And that's not the way it works. But as many people have been uh, told, uh, told like this, they think this is this way. So Canon give you 32 megapixels and you think, oh, that's a great camera. No, this is not a great camera. This is an okay camera and could be a brilliant camera. And they didn't make it brilliant. I don't understand why. Thank you, Photosura, for lending me the camera. Sorry for telling my opinion, but as they always tell me, say, Eric, doesn't matter, tell your opinion. And if clients don't buy this one, they'll buy something else. And that's not a problem. So 
thank you for lending me the camera and uh, as always let let me tell what i want thank you to you for watching the video if you think it may help any other people please share it on social networks if you're not done yet please subscribe to my youtube channel the small button down here and also a small bell if you click on the bell you get notified when i upload a new video my website erigible.com if you have any question you can leave a comment below or send me an email to info at erigible.com below I'll also leave you some links of my gear on amazon also links to other part of my youtube channel thank you very much bye